Relics can hide, but they can't run. So let's commence Operation Relic Discovery. What is going on everyone? I hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic day. Guess where I am? <laughs> if you're one of my newer subscribers, you may not know, but this has been a long time coming and I am not a quitter. Just a lot of things have happened in life and um, I got some explaining to do, but it's gonna be a really fun video today. So I'm gonna try to roll through some of this. So I am at the project property in Virginia that I own. This house was, they started building it in 1918 and I believe it was completed in 1921. So here I am after uh, nothing more than cutting the grass for uh, about a year. I bought this like toward the end of 2019. So apart from just like cutting the grass over the last year, um, I haven't done much with it up until about the last month or so when I cleared most of the valuables out of here, uh, was integrating, stripping this house down and using the features in where I currently live. I have had a lot going on. I just haven't been filming it, you know? It was just me enjoying it and I wasn't picking up the camera and vlogging it because it wasn't really specifically, you know, treasure hunting themed. And I figured, hey, why don't I w just, in, you know, enjoy it? But anyway, I had to spend, you know, a week or so out here on different days uh, over the last, you know, two months on nice days, clearing out brush all over again because this is a very tricky property to maintain being right by the water. But let me just stop rambling on and show you what's up and then we're gonna do some metal detecting today. We're gonna try to finish digging out the penny hoard and see if we can get to over 100 coins. This has been a fantastic location for metal detecting. So, also, since almost all the valuables are out of the house now, and I'm planning on selling this uh, soon, once I get the yard in tip-top shape and I finish stripping down the inside, I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna do, do just a really budget remodel, do some painting and put the bathroom back in and a few other things, or if I'm just gonna try to you know, drop it on an investor, I don't know yet. Um, but anyway, it's uh, 1.3 acres goes out, I'm sorry for the lighting just the time of day right now, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. And um, gigantic pine tree there, I'm clearing out all the brush around that. And uh, yeah, it's just an awesome place. I know I never showed it extensively more because I, uh, for you know good reasons, was trying to keep the lo location secret for quite a while. But I just love all the boxwoods on this property. There's a look at the house there from the front. She's a bit rough, <laughs> as you can tell looking up in here, but uh, somebody will love this place. But yeah, I never did any, I don't know if you can see it from the lighting angle there, but uh, I, I will take you all, all you guys inside and I'm gonna do a quick recap of everything that I've pulled off of this property. I literally stopped this series of videos in November 9th of 2019, so I haven't made a video about this location and about a little bit over a year and um, so here's what I've been doing here clearing out all the brush I got one of those backpack leaf blowers and uh, also trying to uncover old relics and stuff by the bank if you remember <laughs> right in this area there was a miniature bottle dump and I got an old coke bottle and some other stuff and um, so I pulled out my leaf blower and uh, it's just taking layer and layer of debris out of here. You can see I uncovered a little bit of a bottle dump, some kind of like glass bowl, just all sorts of broken glass down in here, as well as just, you know, concrete pieces. Some of this is from retaining walls over the years, and some of it's just debris from the uh, ruins of these buildings over here, these outbuildings. I showed this in a previous video. These steps right here, are marked, it has the original uh, family's name that this property uh, was owned by in the date of 1964. But the amount of brush I've been uh, doing and burning has been extensive. So anyway, when I was using my leaf blower, I did make a pretty cool discovery. This is probably my best non-metallic find uh, on the outside of this property so far. 
But I got this amazing little complete bottle. It appears to be milk glass, and it's got that aluminum lid on it. Um, I showed my dad this, and he actually said that he thought that Old Spice used to come in these containers. I'm not certain, but I'm sure somebody in the comments will know. But uh, I uncovered that with my leaf blower, you know, blowing out the bank here. And um, so I'm not certain if this is from, I mean, I know it's kind of mid-century, uh, you know, could be 1960s or so. But uh, this is the little workshop out here um, that used to be, you know, like a, uh, a garage apartment. It used to be an apartment up there a long time ago. It hasn't been used in a long time. I do know that uh, the owner's son used to live up there way back in the day. Um, but anyway, got the back door here. Cleared a lot of the brush out of this area. As you can see, we still got some snow. This is the side of the house that doesn't get any sun. And um, I can't give too much of an angle here because the sun's right above the house right now and you're not going to be able to see. But this is part of the story here too. And I, I never shared the story and I'm not going to now because I don't want this video to be like insanely long. I don't want to get too far off topic. But uh, this vehicle, this 96 Honda Accord, uh, came with the house. I had it fixed up. I love the thing. I've been driving it around. Um, it really wasn't even used extensively. Um, it only has like 180,000 miles on it. So that was my little uh, uh, part of the estate that I bought. Actually, I got the vehicle with it too. So this is the apartment building up here. Um, now, for context, I need to explain this for everybody who's not aware of what going, is going on. When I say penny hoard, so first of all, I dug 82, I think it was, 82 pennies on this property before I found a single higher denomination coin. Now, some of those were older and had nothing to do with the hoard. I found like six wheat pennies or maybe a few more, six, maybe six to eight wheat pennies on the property. I found a really deep Indian head penny. I think might have been 1903. I can't remember, but... Apart from the oldies, in this front portion of the yard, the whole way out to the road, there is scattered pennies all over the place, and none of them date newer than 1985. And I think most of them were thrown in 1985 because they pretty much all date from, you know, pretty much the late 60s up until 1985. So I don't know what somebody was doing up here, but there were just loads and loads and loads of them. I was never able to get them all out. I know I left some out by the road and it was so extensive that I even have coin signals under all of this, you know, uh, plastic in the landscaping. So maybe if we get to today, I'm gonna pull all of that up. Um, so I will link below to the two previous extensive detecting videos I did here, the good ones. I did like a test video that wasn't really all that exciting. But up here, close to that, um, you know, the, um, the apartment building up here, I found a silver dime from 1959. And um, we're just gonna do some leaf blowing today, looking for relics, and I'm also going to do a lot of uh, metal detecting. And that's gonna start here as soon as I finish uh, this little introduction. So uh, let me grab the keys and I will show you inside really quickly. Um, all the different stuff I found and just give you a quick peek and then we're gonna get in the dirt Alrighty, so here it is on the inside of the house This place has a lot of the original woodwork, which is amazing with the really thick and wide trim and um, You'll just have to excuse all the stuff I have around I'm still stripping this place down to the walls and getting all the stuff out of here and organizing uh, What's left that I'm not keeping? I've been using a lot of this stuff in here at my current residence where I live and um, using it to beef up my garage and all sorts of stuff. But uh, this is the library anyway. And this isn't gonna be an extensive tour, but uh, I'm almost done with getting everything out of this property. So it's just gonna pre be pretty much bare bones. And um, the bathroom that I've been tearing out is in that room, this little hallway area here. And this is the room where I tore out all the carpets. Still got some furniture and stuff in here. And uh, this main room, I got it cleared out quite a bit. 
it's looking up. I know you can't see much on this camera. I'm just using uh, a handy cam right now. Goes into the kitchen. This has got a decent size upstairs too. This is a quite a large place. <laughs> got the old lockers in there. I might try to take these out. I mean, this thing's pretty big, but I love those lockers. And the back room here, and then there's a little addition on the side. So this video is not intended to be a tour. I just wanted to uh, just quickly show the property a little bit. I've had an issue with the leak over here, but that's a story for another day. But I'm gonna be getting all this out of here and pulling up all this flooring. So before we start digging, this is most of the good stuff that I've found on this property so far. Um, as far as like the jars and stuff go, that's like an old pickle jar. Um, I'm sorry about the smoke alarm there. I gotta put a new battery in it. Uh, just a couple that I found in the creek. Uh, I did pull those both out of the water here. Uh, one of the better finds, unfortunately, it was broken. It's one of the super old uh, Coke bottles. I think I'm gonna uh, use a bottle cutter to uh, salvage this one. I need to buy one of those. I'm really interested in salvaging some of these old bottles that are busted on the top. Uh, just a piece of like a, a horseshoe there. And this is most of the relics and the coins and the decent stuff. There are 84 coins in there. And only two of them are not pennies. There's a clad diamond there. And that one is a 1959 silver. The Indian head penny, 1903 and um, like a lipstick tube, a little old buckle, an old dog tag, I can't remember the date on that, probably from the 60s or so, and uh, just a whole mess of pennies. Uh, some wheat pennies mixed in there, but mostly coins from like, like I said, the late 60s to 1985. There's only like a couple that are newer, like zincs that have been dropped on the property over the last few decades. Um, so that's it, you know, so far. 84 coins, all of that stuff, and I barely put a dent in this place as far as the outside exploration. So it's time to get back into it. I've kind of got my mojo back. I know the channel went through quite a lull for a while, but uh, man, I've had a lot to do in life and kind of lost the motivation for a while, which was all good. I just needed a break. But now's the time to get back to work and just explore this amazing property keep fixing it up and I'll keep everybody posted. We're not going to go in the workshop right now. Still working on cleaning that up and getting stuff out of there. And of course we'll go ahead and add this amazing bottle to the pile. And now it's time to bust out the metal detector. And next time I turn the camera on, we're going to be digging some holes. Stand by. Alrighty, so I got my first signal down here. And I'm going to show you what it is in a second. I already knew where this target was, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, but I figured I'd show over here quickly. This is a bucket I've had under here of when I was of all the trash I found on the property, and I was digging out where one of the outbuildings had come down. And uh, there's mason jar lids in here. That's a gigantic old uh, window weight, just full of all sorts of uh, random stuff in there. Of uh, the more junky stuff that I found. But uh, I started with this signal because I knew it was here. I actually eyeballed it um, after some rain washed some of this landscaping out of here. And apparently it's uncovered again because I couldn't see it. But when I was out here doing work one day, I actually eyeballed this and it's underground now. Uh, it appears it's covered back over. And uh, we're gonna see if it's, if that penny hoard extends back here somewhat. This is frozen in here. I wasn't even thinking, I hope all the ground's not frozen here today. But, it is a penny. Like I said, I knew I didn't really look at it much before. It's definitely copper, it's not a zinc one. Um, question is, is that a wheat penny on the surface? Unbelievable. Like I said, I saw it before face up and I never picked it up because I wanted to save it for the next video. I thought for sure that was going to be a copper penny from like the 70s. 
and it's a wheat penny on the surface in the landscaping. Isn't that wild? But actually, man, you never know. Actually, one of the oldest silver coins I ever found was in somebody's landscaping almost on the surface. It was a seeded dime. Let me see if I can get this to focus here. Wait a second. I I don't believe this. I, I seriously don't believe this. Am, am I seeing things right now? Is that 1909? Is this a first year issue wheat penny? I have never found a 1909 VDB. Could this have the Victor David Brenner initials on the back? I'm I'm seriously speechless right now, unless I'm seeing that wrong. That looks like a 190. They started the wheat since 1909, so if that's a 190, it has to be a 1909. Unbelievable, literally by the addition, right by the chimney. I'm in shock right now. I thought that was gonna be a penny from the 70s. I'm gonna go clean this up in the house and I'm gonna let you know what this is. What an amazing start to this hunt. Who would have ever thunk? Okay, so because it was dirty, I was totally seeing things. I thought that was a zero. Um, it looks like a 1945. That, less, that last digit is a bit hard to read. Um, the interesting thing about the coin, though, is it has an S mint mark. It appears. I don't think that's a D. So this is the whole way from San Francisco. Uh, so it's not a 1909, but that's a wheat penny in the landscaping. So while we're, while I was right here cleaning it up, oh, that's about the best shot I'm going to get right there. It's like a 45S maybe. You tell me in the comments what you think. But that is coin number 85, and let's put it in the bowl next to the Indian. Okay, so I'm still in this section, and um, I've never detected extensively back here because there is a ton of iron and stuff especially around the edges of the house, and it's really not easy to detect. You have to go super slow. Um, and I've never really gone up through here, you know, trying to avoid the areas where there would be a lot of trash. And I got a solid signal here. And uh, we're gonna... I think this may be a coin. It's very concise and concentrated, and it's ringing up really nice. I wouldn't even be surprised if this was a silver dime. But, uh... You never know, but it's a really, really good sound. We're gonna do it live, because why not? We got all day. This ground's perfect in between frozen and not frozen, and these plugs are perfect. Just perfect digging conditions out here today. in the back of my hole here. Touching it there. Here's a coin. I think what we'll do today is I'll probably work on the coin shooting and uh, maybe we'll go, it's a wheat penny. Unreal. So we're in the good spot today. Look at that. Oh, man. What's the date on this one? I don't mind rubbing these because they're, I mean, envir environmentally damaged anyway. I can tell the relief's high, so this is going to be from like the 40s or 50s. I think it would say 1950-something on there. 1955 Denver. Second coin of the day, second wheat penny, and that is coin number 86. Let's keep searching. So I came into the front for now. I really need to be in the sun because it's only supposed to be in the upper 30s for most of the day. So I want to stick to the sun until I warm up and then we'll go back there again and work through all of that iron and stuff. But uh, I came out to where the penny hoard is uh, originally, and I want to show you guys under the landscaping here. I dug pennies all the way up to the edge here and um, down here in between all these uh, grown, uh, grown in boxwoods. 
That's an insanely good signal there. 89, that's kind of like silver dime slash clad quarter range. There's kind of a junky tone there, kind of a mid-tone, pulled tabish range. But there's stuff under this landscaping. I'm pulling it out. Literally, I'm pulling the, I'm pulling all this landscaping plastic out right now. We ain't letting those targets go. Seriously, you think I would do that? Not me. This is kind of fun. So I started pulling the plastic out here, and it's all frozen under here because the sun doesn't hit here. So this like layer of dirt and moss came up in like sheets of carpeting. It's pretty cool actually. You can see all those roots under there. I know it doesn't take much to amuse me, seriously. But anyway, I am down under here to that amazing signal. And where's my shovel? I got it. So let's see if we can unlock that amazing signal that was down here. get it out? I did. Oh, it's a penny. Looks, ah, uh, this is probably part of the hoard. This one looks like it was lawn mowered and then shot into the bushes here probably. Yep, that's from that range. Yep, the hoard goes the whole way back up by the porch here. That looks like 1982. It's definitely copper variety. That's the transition year. Looks like 1982 Denver. And uh, you can't see it there. That's the brick of the front porch right there. That's the house. So we're gonna keep swinging under here. And let's, I tell you what, while I got the camera rolling, let's see if I could locate that junk signal that was back here. I mean, it could be a toasted zinc penny. Oh, it looks like that might have been on top. That was probably on top of the plastic. Anyway, I'll get back at you when I get something else. So I came out by the road, right by my driveway, because between here and the main road is one of the areas where I never dug all of the pennies out of from that hoard. Didn't take more, more than a couple steps out here. And um, three inches down. Another 1982 copper, this one from Philadelphia. I forgot to say in the last one, it was coin 87. So this is coin number 88, and I think I'm gonna continue to do the coin shooting and try to get up to 100 today. Literally seconds later, right at the end of the sidewalk, going out to the road, the original entrance. Another coin, solid signal. It's copper, and it looks like it's gonna be another one from the 1985 hoard. Always got to let you see the date on it. Right there on that one, 1972. Right in that date range from as all the other ones. That is coin number 89. Let's continue on. What's fascinating about this spot is the end of this sidewalk has been grown over for so long. I actually dug one of the pennies from that hoard under the grass and the dirt, but on top of the sidewalk. So some of this has been covered over since about the 80s. It's pretty fascinating. But I'm over here by this rotted out tree that I don't, you can't really see it now. There's a big hole that goes down in here. It's all hollowed out. That is actually the snake pit. There's a big cave down in under there where all the roots rotted out. Anyway, we have coin number 90 down in the hole, about two to three inches down. And is it from the hoard? Or is it older? It is indeed another coin from the penny hoard. 1981, coin number 90. With the moist soil, these targets are jumping out beautifully today. And I'm um, still here, right in front of the snake pit, only about two feet away from the last one. I'm sorry for the weird sun angle here. Let me block it, there we go. Coin on edge right there, typical depth for these. Out here, two to two and a half inches down. And it's another one from the penny hoard. 1975, that is coin number 91 from the property. And I am just chucking them all here on the sidewalk for now. We will harvest them later. Literally only went about another foot. Popped the plug right about there. Or not right about there, right there I should say. 
inch and a half down. We're gonna have another penny from the hoard. And let's rub-a-dub-dub -dub for the date. Ooh, this one's high relief. This one's slightly older, but it's still from the hoard. Obviously in the 1980s, pennies from the 60s and 70s were normal pocket change. And that right there is gonna be a 1968 coin number 92. So I've never detected this close to the road, knowing that the targets would be deeper, and I was trying to avoid traffic and attention before. But right here, I got a deep coin signal. You can see them down in gravel that's been kicked off the road over the years. We'll see if these are from the hoard, just deeper because of more layers of dirt and uh, debris over the years. But it's a solid coin signal way down there. But uh, like I said, it's right on the edge here of where all the pennies from the hoard came, so they're probably deeper in this section. But let's hope there's some oldies out here too. This is a very old road and a very old house. Look at that crustage. What do we have? Is this a weedy? Okay, so this is not from the hoard. This is a wheat penny, which means the whole way out to the road here, there's a potential for some more old stuff. This was significantly deeper than all of the hoard pennies, which apparently seemed to stop about right here. Maybe it's all between here and the house. So this is a great sign. Let's check the date on this. It looks like it's gonna be a 1946, locked down under that gravel for a very long time. Coin number 93, and it's a weedy. I'm about a yard away now. Let's wait for that car. And uh, right between the snake pit and the road, and this one's borderline, we're gonna do it live. It's right where the targets start to get deeper, and I am sorry for the sun angle, but at least I can give you a wave. What's going on? So right here, that's popping 85, 86. So this could be a silver dime, just in case. I'm gonna do it live. It's reading slightly deeper than those pennies from the hoard, which are mostly between the surface and about two and a half inches down a piece with rare exceptions. But since we had that weedy out here by the road, and this is a borderline one, we're definitely doing this one live. In the back of the hole. It's right here. It looks like it's gonna be one of the hoard pennies. I can see it's got the memorial on the back. Wasn't as deep as I thought, but it was right, you know, like I said, closer to the road, they start getting deeper. This one was closer to three inches here. Let's see if we can see the date on this one. That looks like 1977. That's definitely from the hoard, and that is coin number 94. Right by the path here, I decided to dig my first signal that wasn't a coin tone. It's very clean up here. And I had a signal that was very small target, sounded more like in the pull tab range, but I wanted to show you here. This path is still under this blanket of soil and grass. It's just grown over over the years. And like I said, I found a few coins from the hoard on top of it, but this one is kind of interesting because this actually has a piece of metal embedded down to the original mixture here to make the walkway. Let me move this root out of the way here. I don't know if that right there, like what it is, but it's definitely part of the actual sidewalk. I don't think it's a button, but it almost looks like a tiny piece of copper of some kind. See, I kind of chipped it there. And you can see the red showing through. There's like a little piece of copper of some kind embedded down into this when they made it. Um, it's not a coin. I don't know what it is. It actually almost looks like a little tiny little button, but we're never going to find out because to get that out, I would have to destroy it. But I figured that'd be neat to show um, that the path is still here. Let's see if we can pop a few more of them coins. I was actually able to pop that little copper thing out of the sidewalk. Of course, I had to kind of like destroy the edge of it, but I was able to get down in there with the tip of my shovel and pry it out. 
I can't tell if that's some sort of rivet or if that's a button, but that was literally part of the sidewalk. Probably got thrown in the concrete mixture when they were putting that in. So uh, that was pretty weird. Let's keep looking. Okay, so I just did the pokey poke test with my shovel to make sure the signal wasn't under the sidewalk. And we're all good. I'm off to the edge of it now. And this is a little bit bouncy of a signal. Coming right around 80. Now that could be an older penny, but it's also kind of sounds like a bottle cap being by the side of the road. You never know. But this is definitely worth doing live. That's kind of how the old wheat pennies can ring up. So let me mark my spot here and try to block the sun the best I can. Feels good on the back anyway. So I get a warm back and you get a better camera shot. Win-win scenario. Isn't that right? Well, we got it dead on here. Oh, is that it? It is it. That is a who's and what's it. I'm not sure what that is. It's broke off of something on the side of the road here. Could be a piece of a vehicle part of some sorts. On to the next. I hope you all appreciate my services because I had to crawl underneath or I should say not crawl underneath, but bend over and reach under the boxwoods here for this one. I think I've got most of the easy to get targets from the coin hoard now, thinning out by the road there. But uh, underneath the box boxwoods, right where the height of this penny hoard is, there's still coins way up under all of these bushes. And what do we have here? It is definitely a copper scent. Let's see if we can Spot us had some datage on there. And no, under the boxwoods, these are a bear to clean up. They just seem to have more stuff caked on the front of them. But this is going to be, there it is right there. We got it poking through. 1970, that is coin number 95. We just might make it to 100. So I wasn't joking when I told you these signals are way up under these boxwoods. Check this one out. JD. Going in. Oh my goodness. That is way back there. Oh, I might have to cut some of these branches. Now oh, we can do this. We got this. Where'd my signal go? Okay, we got this. These roots are no fun though. Come on. Ah, oh, now that was a best case scenario. I pulled it up in my shovel, man. That's efficiency right there. That saved me some hassle. What do we got here? 1980, and that is coin number 96. So we harvested the, harvested, we harvested the last penny from under that boxwood. Now this one, there's a signal under the next one up here right where I pulled most of the pennies from this hoard. And um, this one, I'll let you hear it real quick. This one is in the zinc range. So knowing this hoard very well, I'm gonna make a prediction. Since I have put together all the pieces and believe that all of these pennies were thrown out in 1985, then that means that this coin, if it is indeed a zinc penny, most likely, there's a couple stray new ones up here, but most likely, this coin is gonna be between the dates of 1982 and 1985, because in 82 is a transition year when they went to zinc. So when these pennies were buried, there were not many zinc pennies in existence yet. And the newest one I found from the hoard was 1985, which tells me this zinc penny, which is what my signal was. You can see how it's been crusted and down there for a long time. This is most likely from the hoard and 
if it has a legible date, it's going to be between 1982 and 1985, but being under the boxwoods all them years, this one is absolutely gnarly. But if I get a date, I'll let you know if my prediction rang true, but I'm almost positive that's what it is. It actually didn't clean up too bad, but you can see right there, 1983. That is coin number 97. So the signals are thinning out up here. And uh, in the past, I avoided some of the coins from this hoard by this tree because the roots are really bad. So I only dug the ones that were easy to access. And um, I spent a couple minutes digging out that one that was about five inches down, cutting through those roots. And I got it out here somewhere. I don't know if, I mean, this could be an older one, but it, this is right in the area where the hoard is. So it's hard to tell on this signal. Is that it? What is a coin? And, yep, it's going to be part of the penny hoard. It's low relief, so it looks like it's going to be 1969 to 1982. But I should be able to pop the date on this one very quickly. Nineteen seventy four Denver. That is coin number ninety eight. So, this boxwood, I had to cut a large section out of it because it was dead. And um, I went deep within where I've never been able to swing my detector before. And oh my goodness, the coins are under here too. 81 to 83 signal. Come around the other side. One right here too. Let's uh, grab the shovel and see if these are part of the hoard. Most of the pennies didn't extend down this far, but man, who knows? These probably are from it because they're not super deep right by the base of this here. So if I want to get all of the coins, oh wow, this is right down in the, oh, I popped it out, sitting right on those boxwood roots. In that jungle right there. Yeah, the hoard's gonna extend the whole way. Maybe, man, it almost looks like they intentionally threw a lot of these pennies by these boxwoods. But um, they're all over the yard. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. Like they were using it as like, sort of like nutrients for plants or something. There's a lot of different reasons people use zinc in gardens and stuff like that. And copper repels slugs. There's all sorts of home remedies. And uh, some of them probably more fables than others, but there are some truth to some of the stories. I can't see the date on that one, but that's definitely from the hoard. That's gonna be coin number 99. Plot twist. Before we hit 100, even though we can hit it right there, Let's try to make a coin number 100 an old one. Why don't you say we go into the backyard now and do some relic hunting, and maybe if we pop a coin out, it'll be a super old one. I think we're gonna do that. So right now, I came up in front of the uh, apartment building, and uh, up here before, right in through here is where I found the silver dime, and I also did find a wheat penny closer to the uh, steps over here. I'll show you what that looks like. They're kind of in pretty bad shape here. But I found a wheat penny around here somewhere too. I had a high signal I thought might be spiking too high and that it was gonna be iron or steel. I pulled this little tiny piece of copper out of the hole and uh, at the actual signal I was looking for <laughs> was an old razor blade it looks like. So that's why you wear gloves while you're metal detecting. So uh, we'll fill this hole in and keep digging. Update. It's been about 10 minutes. I've combed over this area pretty good, and, and in the past there wasn't a lot of signals anyway. Um, but here's some of the targets I dug. Dug this long piece of copper here. I think that broke off of it. Not sure what that's off of. When I dug this up, I thought I had a flat button or something. Really green patina on it. No, it's not gonna focus right now. Probably got dirt on the lens. But I think that's just one of the, I don't know why it turned green. I thought at first it is a lead cap off of like a roofing nail. And then I found one of the nails that turned green too, so maybe that went on the end of there. Who knows? And then I just got this really weird brackety looking doodad. It's very odd looking though. 
What happened to that? I have no idea. That's what I got in the last 10 minutes. Let's try a different spot. So I came in the back by the chimney where I found the two wheat pennies and decided to work really slow through all the iron and junk back here. Now I already cut my plug on this because I'm not sure on this one. When it hits the right way, it almost sounds like a wheat penny. But when you change directions, the tone drops a little bit closer to like 79. So I don't know if this is gonna be a coin, but if it is a coin, it's probably gonna be an old one. Uh, but just in case it's coin number 100, we wanna capture that live. Let's do the sun blockage here. Should be right at it here in a second. Grab my shovel. Right down on it, whatever it is, it's down there a ways. Had to have been down there for a while. It is a coin. It's, it's got to be another wheat penny. Man, I hope there's some silver in this section. Look at that. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. 1954. Wheat Penny from Philadelphia. That's not one you actually see every day. That's pretty cool. That is coin number 100 from the property. And I am so happy I could make it an oldie and on a live dig. That is so sweet. Let's check the hole again, the way that was bouncing. Oh boy. Is there something else in the hole? I'm gonna try this with the detector first. Oh, I think there's iron in the hole, and that's why it was messing with that signal a little bit. We're just going to pry in here to the side a little bit and see. There it is. Like I said, a lot of junk in this area, and this is what was messing that signal up. Just a big old nail. Chunky one, too. All right. We got a nail. Coin number 100. To get through the iron, I'm swinging at a slow pace like molasses in January. And it actually is January, but this is not very deep. There's boxwoods on this property everywhere. Did I say that right, everywhere? Didn't seem like it came out right. Not very deep, but... This might be bigger than a coin, I don't know. It's right about here, I, hope it, I think it's a little bit frozen under here. Slightly, it's thawing out. I want to do most of the good signals live back here just because most of the stuff's old back here. And we, well, what is that? Is that just aluminum? Yeah, that's just aluminum. On to the next. Alrighty, so I just got the first cool relic of the day. And just a few seconds ago, before I turned the camera on, I got a good scare. There was a massive blue heron in the creek down here. I saw him last time. For some reason, he hangs out in this section. And when he took off flying, he scared me half to death because that is a big jalopy of a bird. Anyhow, solid zinc tone right here and it ended up being three inches down. Knew it wasn't gonna be a modern penny. Very typical signal for this find. Got me an old key. That's a cool one. Herd. Does it say herd, H-U-R-D? Somebody comment, let me know how old this key is and what it goes to, potentially. I like finding old keys. Other than that, a lot of aluminum chunkage back here. We will persevere. Okay, I think we're into some fun stuff here. Still in this general area up by the chimney. Decided to work the edge of the house here really slow with all the iron. And uh, this signal was bouncing all over the low 80s. I couldn't tell if it was a little bit of a bigger target or multiple targets or just one piece of junk. So I decided just to pop the hole before I turn the camera on. And um, I don't know if this is, I'll have to check to see if it's got friends. But right here, about three and a half inches down. We got ourselves a disc. Most certainly, that is going to be an old coin, or at least I hope. And if it is, well, whether it is or not, we're going to check the hole again in this area, because like I said, there was a lot of chatter here. And uh, what do we have? What do we have here? 
it's going to be another wheat penny. I can see the date on it right there. 1952, it looks like. That is so cool. I didn't expect there to be this many old coins back here. I have detected back here before, but I never went super slow through all this junk because a lot of the backyard, once you get behind those boxwoods, most of the ground's been manipulated and it's low lying. It's had flooding over the years and there's concrete and uh, the old outbuildings have fallen down. And I did, did one test hole the one day when we filled up a bucket of uh, old uh, outbuilding trash that was dozed over. So I didn't think there was going to be these old coins around here with all the ground manip manipulation, but it seems like in this area right here, hasn't seen much groundwork. There's probably, when this addition was built, they probably buried over a bunch of old coins, but uh, let's set that wheat penny aside and we're gonna check to see if that was an isolated signal or if there's another one down here. There's definitely, when you can hear some chatter, when it's clipping some iron that way the signal gets worse but this way right there that is certainly another coin maybe not it's not very deep we're gonna dig it up see if it's part of this it's probably a spill if this is another old coin oh there's some roots here from the tree i'm sorry with the bad sun glare right now but we'll make do Pinpointer is on. Yeah, it is right down under this cluster of roots. Ugh. Now this one did sound like another penny. It wasn't screaming kind of like silver to me. Man, there's just a gigantic knot of a root right here. We'll remedy this. We're gonna remedy this. And I'm gonna show you right now how we're gonna remedy this. We ain't playing games today. Oh yes, we are not playing games. No game playing today. This is serious metal detecting. Wish I had hand pruners right now. Here. I'll set you on the plug right here while I cut this. Oh, you got the sun, sorry about that. But we're not messing around here. We're not messing around here. All right. Let's get this out. It's literally under that that like junction of where all the roots came together. There it is, coin, unreal. It's another weedy, I think this was a coin spill. Let me hawk a loogie on this puppy. See if we can uncover the date. This is probably in the same range as the other one. Oh, this might be older. This is lean, mean green right here. Tell you what, I'll get back in it. Got cold lips out here. I'm gonna get back with you in a second. This one might be older. Well, I don't think this was a coin spill now because it's weird, but that 50s penny was four inches deep and this one was only two inches deep. So I think something pushed it up. I'm gonna have to really try to clean at it later. But this is one of my oldest coins from the property so far. I did get a 1903 Indian head and I think maybe one teens weedy. But that one right there, it is definitely 1920 something and it's super green. So it doesn't have this even same color. It doesn't have the same color as the other wheat penny. So I think these were just inadvertently close to each other. Um, so that's coin 102 right there. Very appropriate for a 1920s coin. 102 from a 1920s. And uh, we'll throw it right there by the other penny. That was quite the shot. And uh, Let's see if we have anything else. Well, I got the detector rolling here. I don't think there was anything else there. Oh my goodness. Dude. 87? 88? Oh my goodness. I think there's an old silver dime in here with that 20s wheat penny. 
Oh, we're gonna go real slow. We ain't gonna scratch this. Unreal. Oh, I took my other layer of gloves off. Oh well. Man, this signal's higher. Where's my shovel? Please be an old silver dime from the 1920s. If it's a 1921, we'll be into the money because that's a rare date. I just popped an imprint out here. I don't know if that's from the other one. That looks more penny-like, but who knows? Whatever, this is awesome. Come on. It's right here. No, it's not silver. But maybe there's more down there. What is it with the penny hoards in it? Well, this isn't a hoard. The, of course it is in the front yard, but this is just like a spill probably. But what is it with, let's say, the clusters of coins? Maybe this was a spill. That one doesn't look as old as the other one. Man, I want to see a flash of bright light. I'll get the date on that later. Let's run over this again. Come on, please be another signal down here. Come on, come on, come on. No. There's some iron in there. Man, that was spiking so high. I thought we were onto a silver dime. But I'll clean that up and we'll see the date. That is coin 103. Well, this brings a whole new meaning to the term coin thrown, like in my older videos. So I cleaned it up here and that penny is a 1945. So this was a coin spill. The older wheat pennies sometimes just turn more green in color, and then the ones that are from the 40s and 50s usually turn red. So that explains it. Um, this bill just happened to have an older wheatie in it, which I think is actually a 1923 now that it's drying off. So looks like potentially 1923, 1945, and um, what did I say on this one? 1952 Two was it? I don't remember, but regardless, a spill of wheat pennies from three different decades that's pretty awesome, but I thought that puppy was going to be silver. There's still hope. Let's keep digging. So there's gigantic signals all through this backyard, and I have no idea what they are, if it's just old building materials or what. I'll probably do a video just digging like huge craters back here and seeing what some of the stuff is. But just big, just big targets all over. There's a signal over there closer to the road by an old... Um, stone retaining wall. It sounds like there's a refrigerator down there. I mean, I can lift my coil up like four foot off the ground and get the signal. But I'm trying to comb slowly through this, all this craziness. Right up above it is a more isolated, smaller tone in a very high range. Now it doesn't seem very deep, but I figured we'd try this one. Because this is the type of signal that can be something amazing, like a silver coin. Of course it could be aluminum, but I figured we'd try it anyway. And we're in a nice shaded area here too. Man, the soil's nice back here. I like this. This could be something good. Let's hope. Did I get it out? I did. What is that? Oh man, I thought it was some kind of weird old token. <laughs> it's just a piece of aluminum. There's so much junk back here. Oh, such a perfect folded up piece. <sighs> oh, I gotta get lower. All right, so I decided to give you all a different view here because the sun's really bad from the angle I'm showing it. So I put you on the porch. Um, I am going insanely slow because of like the overload signals from the nails. Uh, and like the uh, the landscaping boards and like up against the side of the house. I should have a smaller coil, but I'm just sweeping super slow uh, um, with like my uh, discrimination on really low and just trying to hear if I can hear a blatant like coin signal that pops out because we had that wheat penny on the surface like a yard down this way earlier. So I'm in the landscaping now and under this uh, plastic, I have another solid penny tone and um, we're gonna do it live here. You can hear 
all the iron. And just a concise 83, about right here under the plastic. So I'm gonna just tear this to shreds here. And we're gonna pop this out. Was it under the plastic? Oh yeah. It's up a little higher. Should be able to read it with the pinpointer. There's like, I don't know, there's a lot of moles coming through here. You can see it snaking through where a mole passed right through here. I'm gonna dig down a little bit because it's obviously not right on the surface here. And all of this thick mud. All right. When I get to it here, I'll grab the, the camera. It's a coin. It is a coin. Well, I'll pop it out. Why not? Let's turn this off. The question is, oh, it's really wet right here. The question is, is this old? Looks like a penny. I'm just gonna clean it here, give it a wipe. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on there. It's probably not gonna focus. It is a wheat scent, so all the coins back in here are old. So I guess they didn't add like any layers of, I mean, there's really not mulch in here. It's just plastic and then the border. So maybe they just wanted, maybe they just wanted to keep a, uh, you know, some, uh, some, you know, the growth from the edge of the house. Cause there's like no build up here. Like you'd expect the old coins and landscaping to be like a foot deep or something, but it's literally like between the surface in like two to three inches down here. Um, uh, while I got you on, uh, I'll clean it up and get the date. May as well. Oh, I got the camera rolling. It doesn't look like one of the super old ones. It's kind of red in color, so it's going to be 1940s or 1950s. And um, this one's 1945. I'm not going to bother showing it up close. You all have seen a wheat penny. Um, this property around World War II, it's cool to find these World War II era coins here because around World War II, they actually used the boxwoods uh, clippings here for income. They used to sell it for, like, you know, people use it for, like, you know, Christmas stuff and that sort of thing, and I'm not sure what other... Uh, what, else, what other reasons they sold it for, but uh, to generate some income around World War II. Uh, I do know that apparently they were selling uh, the clippings of the boxwoods, so uh, some history to go with the house. Figured I'd share that story, and um, we'll keep looking. And by the way, that last coin was 104. So I came behind these boxwoods here that are up against the side of the house. You can see uh, right here, this is where a lot of the rain drips off and washed all this out. So I figured I'd do a quick swipe back here and just eyeball to see if I could see any old like pottery, china, or anything exposed really. And uh, what is that? Yeah, I think that's just the rain smoothing out stuff. Pretty crazy over the years, but uh, I didn't even notice this before. Yeah, there's just pieces of pipe and all sorts of stuff in here. That's why I always look in uh, washed out areas. Yeah, there, there are bits of like pottery and stuff down in here. I like china, not, not necessarily pottery. You can see where it's all washed out. There's like little bits of plastic all through here too, but that is definitely old. Um, so anyway, good areas to just, hey, check out all the icicles still back here. It's cold back here. But anyway, good areas to always check out with the detector because if there's an old, something old down here, it can be literally right on the surface. I had a blasting signal down under there that I knew it was gonna either be a junk or like a silver dollar, just a big hunk of old copper pipe. That's got a little bit of value, so we'll uh, throw that in the pile. And um, don't think there's anything else too interesting under here, but I'll swipe with the detector a bit longer. That's where it goes into the uh, basement. Uh, if you watch back, I found a gigantic uh, black racer snake down there. That was fun. Anyway, 
back to swinging. Unbelievable, I just got another coin working the side of the house. Figured I'd show here first. You can see where the ground is raised up slightly, or maybe not so much the way the sun's hitting it now. But there's a rectangle right there, and it's a big overload signal. That is the septic tank, so there's just ancient poo down there. And um, that is my oil tank. Yes, in uh, southwest Virginia, close to Tennessee, this house still runs off of oil. It is in a very old system. And I uh, just got that filled up for the winter. 194 bucks down the hole. And um, not, I wish this find would be worth 194 bucks, but obviously oil was cheaper this year. That was nice. But uh, anyway, literally right by the side of the house, had a solid coin tone down here. And man, the wind just picked up all of a sudden. Where'd it go? I could see it before I, oh, here it is. I already flipped it out. Man, that's the story of this property. This property, just pennies everywhere. Now, I don't know if this one's from the horde or not. The horde, for the most part, ended around the front of these bushes where it starts into the front yard. So we're gonna play it safe and call this one not part of the horde, the penny horde, but it is a copper cent, low relief, so it's gonna be 1969 to 1982. So we'll set that on top of the oil tank here for now because I forgot to put a pouch on and I got stuff laying all over the place. And we'll see if we can pull some. I didn't even know there was a stump under here. Learn something new every day. So let me explain the last 10 minutes here from the shade. This is the section here where there are a couple of deep coins. It's around where I found my Indian head penny. So as I worked up there, I was gonna try to find any deep signals I missed. And uh, I found one signal that sounded really good and it was down about seven inches in clay. And it was just this piece of junk. And I dug one other small piece of trash. So I figured, well, it's kind of a coin day. Let's just uh, not beat around the bush pun completely intended, and go back under that boxwood and get the other coin that was on the other side, because remember, we wanted to go into the backyard to save 100, coin number 100 for an old one. So I went and dug it out through the worst roots right by the base of that boxwood, and it wasn't actually a penny. It was this piece of threaded copper that just sounded exactly like a penny, like this one next to it. So we're still waiting for coin 106, we're in 105, and I've just been digging up some junk but I'm gonna keep searching. Okay, I came back out by the road to work this strip to see if I could find any more old coins up to the front of the house. And uh, that tree's been worked on by a woodpecker for a while. Anyway, there's just a wiener dog over here a second ago. The one that's been over here before when I've been out here. There's been several dogs in this area. I don't know where he went, but he came over when the people that were leaving up here that own him and uh, as the lady was driving by, she said, hey Cody, get back to the house. And she yelled out the window to me, um, something like, if he gets in your way, just hit him on the head or something, kind of jokingly. <laughs> so we're not gonna smack Cody on the head, but we are gonna look for some more coins. And there's obviously some roadside fill on the edge here because I literally went down eight inches there for a faint target thinking I might be onto a deep coin. It was literally this modern pull tab. Hey. Here, Cody. Completely ignoring me. Come on over here. Okay, still out by the road. Had a solid coin tone. We've done really all around the, well, we haven't gone all around the property, but I made a big circle from where I started. And, um, coin number 106 and I can't believe it it's actually a dime but if it's in that date range of those pennies it was probably mixed in with them I don't know if this is super new or not but this is only the third dime from the property and we're over a hundred coins I have never found a single nickel or quarter on this property it is just bizarre that is 1968 that and it's only three inches down that could be from the penny hoard did find one dime in the hoard before that was darker somebody probably thought it was a penny a lot of people get pennies and dimes confused especially when the dimes are dark but hey <laughs> it's a lot it's nicer to dig a dime other than a penny that's a uh, 10 for the price of one back in the front of the walkway about where we started and um I think I got another coin here. This one's about three to four inches. 
So this could be from the horde, it could be an older one. Hard to tell, but we're gonna finish it live because it sounded exactly like a coin. And it is, and naturally, we're back to the pennies. And this is one of the, or no wait, oh that fooled me, I thought it was a wheat penny. Yep, this is part of the hoard. And, should be able to see the date momentarily. Stand by. It's copper, and it's the uh, 1982 copper variety. The transition year. Coin number. 107. Back by the snake pit and a signal I missed earlier will come in through here because I was trying to dig everything out. But uh, this one was in the zinc range and it's from the hoard as you can see. 1983 coin 108. Man, I'm getting tired. I've been out here for quite a while. But uh, cooling off in the shade a little bit. Uh, I shed the hoodie and um, I just keep going over this patch super, super slow. And once in a while, something pops up and check it out. I think I got another old coin where we've been finding all the other ones right in through here. I had enough by the road and I think I got almost all of the coins from the hoard out of there anyway. And um, this was fairly deep in the soft soil, five to six inches. And I popped out a disc that I'm almost certain is gonna be at least a wheat penny. It definitely is. That thing is slick and old. I'm not gonna let the camera roll because that's really caked. I'm gonna clean it up. Stand by. Man, that one's an oldie. And look at that crystal clear date on it. 1924. That's a sweet find. Man, I wish that had a D mint mark on it. That would have been a semi key date and had some value. Even the S mint marks are pretty good in 1924 but the old estimates are very rare in my area. I normally don't hit San Francisco coins until you get up into the 1940s as they were transported around the much, country much easier by then. Um, but yeah, 1924 minted in Philadelphia and that was deep. That's right, you know, around the early days of this house. And uh, that's definitely what we're looking for right here. Let's continue on. Gotta be another one hiding down there somewhere. But if there's not, I can't complain because this is coin number 109. Still going at a snail's pace here and picking out signals. This one was really masked by some iron and little tiny bits of low tone trash, which is probably like foil. Went down about four inches there and thought it was gonna be onto another wheat penny. But this is pretty much a mid-century find from around the period of a lot of them coins we're finding back here. It's a little uh, four hole aluminum button. I find these around the old houses a lot. My understanding is that these are mainly mid-1900s. So that's at least something that's period that's down there with the coins. So at least we got something that's more uh, relic-y in nature. So we'll add that to the coin throne here and continue on. Literally just a few seconds later, dug that button right there. And uh, this signal I probably skipped before while I was cherry picking because this was in the uh, aluminum range of the small pieces that I get out of here. I have a pile that I set over there by the tree. And uh, that's definitely an old, old shell casing right here. Probably World War II-ish on that one. Moving on. Well, I'm struggling to find any more good targets. It's really thinning out. And I forgot to show when I found that other bottle the other day. I did pull this one too. I threw it over there by the tree. Um, it's not super old. I don't know if it's still kind of like 1960s-ish or that could be a little bit newer. But um, I have no idea. That green bottle was uh, over there and intact by where I found the other one and right in here. This is definitely one of the reasons why you wear gloves. But I got one of the old bottles here. It still had the cap attached to it which is why the metal detector picked it up. These bottle tops sound like wheat pennies a lot of the time or at least in that range. And that's one of those old um, uh, national distributors caps find these around the old houses a lot, but usually not with the glass still attached. So we'll keep looking. Goes to show you when there's areas with a lot of junk and a lot of iron and very hard packed, and especially with roots by the trees, you gotta hit the dirt at every different direction possible to unlock stuff. I got a blasting signal that was very obvious when I was coming from this way. It's close to where I had that weedy spill earlier today, but this one wasn't even deep and it sounded like a coin and I was thinking, Maybe it's just aluminum because you can see my 
pal building up here that I've just thrown random pieces of aluminum that I've been digging up back here. And literally almost right directly below the surface, I have another penny and I think this one's another wheat. I don't think it's a modern one. Yeah, I thought I saw that on the back. That's a wheat scent. I don't think this is one of the super old ones. We'll just, oh, I'll clean it up a second and see the date. That's gonna be coin number 110. Unreal. Well, I stand corrected. That's a little older than I was expecting, especially because it was right under the surface. Probably not gonna show up real well right now because it's drying off, but that is a 1936. 1936. Almost a surface find, just a half inch under the ground there. We'll take that for coin number 110. Awesome. Still in this spot where it's been producing everything. Man, I wish a lot of the backyard haven't, hadn't been excavated. Once you get a little bit past this tree, that's when it starts to just turn into large garbage signals and the soil's been churned, you can tell. But in this original patch here where it's all packed down, the signals just keep coming. And why I'm digging out all the aluminum, because you never know what you're gonna get. Solid signal, two inches down. I just found a crucifix. It sounded just like a piece of shredded aluminum, like in the pull tab range. And it's an old copper cross. I don't think I bent it because it's kind of bent on all sides. And thankfully it didn't break. But it's been down there in this hard pack for a very long time. And that is gonna be the most interesting relic of the day, I would venture to say. I don't know, maybe I did hit it with my shovel right back in here. Regardless, that is a super cool find. Awesome, let's keep looking. So I had a whisper of a signal here that was very deep and I decided to chase it, hoping it wasn't just gonna be a small bit of deep iron. I went down about seven inches there and at that point I thought I might be onto a deep old coin and I don't know what I just popped out. It almost looks like some sort of cap. Man, how this got way down there. Let's check it out here a second. See if there's anything significant about this. If it's just junk. When I first saw that, I was thinking silver, but I have no idea. I'll have to clean that up later. That is very strange, and that was very deep. Huh. The nice thing about this being my own property, I can do whatever I want. The section that I just dug is so hard packed, I knew the plug wasn't gonna go back down because when the ground is like super compact and clay, like it, it kind of leaves a little bit of hump unless you like really stomp it down with your heel. So all I did is I took a lot of the dirt from the bottom of the hole and just flung it under the boxwoods. Who cares, right? Now it goes back just like a perfect puzzle piece. Still digging out the older section back here. And um, about four inches down, I thought it was gonna be closer to the surface in aluminum, but turned out it was just a bigger, deeper target. And it looks like I got a old gear to a clock of some sorts. And I think a piece of the back of it just fell off. It's really brittle. But um, the relics are down here. I'm about done. Man, I am beat. Oh yeah, and I got another shell casing too. I am back by the modern deck that was built on. The old coins have been all off the edge here, or I mean a lot of them. So I bet they buried some coins under there. I may have to crawl under there. But uh, anyway, I got a deep piece of iron right there. And um, I'm just showing it because it's very peculiar shaped. The way it has a blob here, I mean, that's probably just nothing. But it looks like an old, like it could be an old rusted toy gun. You see the shape of it there. Like I said, probably not. It's just very, very odd. 
At, at, at first I thought it was just like the curve to a piece of a horseshoe, which I think it's way too bubbled and rusty to be that, because it's kind of too thick, like right here. I don't really know. I will clean it up in case it resembles something a little bit more when I wash it, but something was telling me, like, man, I wonder if that's just a tiny little toy gun that was made out of iron. I have no idea. So I wanted to come way in back and give you all an overview here for a second. This here is where a barn used to be that collapsed. It was like two stories. It was quite large. And um, I'm not sure exactly what that outbuilding was there. And um, you can see the creek. And uh, this building here used to be an aviary. They kept a lot of birds on this property. And that's the only wall left that's standing. I do know that the previous owner collapsed some of it because he was worried about it falling on him when he was mowing. So he pushed a lot of it in. And this is kind of my burn pit now, where I burn all the brush. And uh, as I've been clearing a lot of the debris out of this back here, there's been all kinds of crazy stuff in here. Like a wheelbarrow and you know all sorts of old pipe fittings and you know planters and whatnot. But uh, I did find these two complete mason, I gotta be careful, there's a barbed wire down in there. Just mason jars, that one's chipped on the lip. And, um, oh, actually that one's broken. <laughs> I think that was complete not too long ago, but uh, maybe something else pushed down on it. But uh, who knows if I dug that whole entire thing out, what would be down in there from the, you know, the barn contents. I really have no idea, but uh, I mean, just found that stuff after I cleared some of the rotted wood out of here and burned it. You can see there's wheels to something right there. Obviously a lot of tin roofing, and uh, there's also been junk thrown in here over the years too. But uh, there's just all kinds of all kinds of crap back in here. And uh, I put these here. These are gutters that were pulled off the the sides of this uh, apartment here. I just threw them back in here. I figured I'd show that. Let's do a little more swinging. So I came over by the base of this gigantic tree, which is kind of where the small bottle dump has started, That I, where, I, where I kind of started the tour of the video originally. And I did have a blasting 86 signal down here. Now, who knows, this could be a bottle top getting closer into the dump, but I want to finish it live because if it is a coin, I would say it's probably going to be silver, if indeed it is a coin, but... Oh, there's dark soil. What is that? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Why is this over here? It's just a nut. Man, that sounded like a million bucks. On to the next. Well, guys, this makes up for that nut. Working by the edge of the boxwoods, by this very old retaining wall. Leads down to the creek. Now that you can actually see that I cleared a lot of the brush, and I'll show you a little bit later, down and under all of that are some original steps that have been buried for a long time. And it goes down to where, kind of like, a, I believe there may have been a spring house down here, but you can see where it's concreted with a bunch of stone, uh, and it collects the water in there but it's just obviously a little bit down in, so all the leaves are in there. I gotta get that out, and we'll explore that another time. But right here, listen to this. There's a big, a huge target right there, but right next to it, I isolated a little high tone, and we got another coin. And um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get down to what that big signal is right now. Like I said, there's a lot of it's over here where there's a signal that's like the size of a refrigerator. But right here, I popped a disc. Is this going to be another old wheat scent? It has to be. That thing is green as all get out. I can't really see anything on it. I'm almost certain it's a weedy. I can see the green edge. It might be an older one too. Maybe 1930s or older. I'll clean it up and let you know. All right, so I'm not sure if this one was dozed around or like the acidic soil in this section of the yard did a toll on it. 
but uh, you can clearly see that it's a wheat scent on the back. It says one cent, and that red color's coming through, so it probably is from the 40s or 50s, but the front of it is incredibly bubbled and corroded, so we may not ever pull a date off of this one, but if I hit it pretty hard with a brass brush or a toothpick, I should be able to see it. I'm not gonna do that now, but that is um, coin number 111. That's amazing. And I think, is that maybe 10 wheat pennies today? Unbelievable. So I wanted to show you where this gigantic signal is here by the retaining wall. I mean, my goodness, the radius. The radius is massive on that signal. I got my coil almost two foot above the ground. I have no idea what's down there. I'd have to dig a huge trench to see what it is. But uh, anyway, trying to work through all this large iron and different stuff back here. I had a isolated a signal. I think where the moles pushed up right here. Super consistent. Small target in the high 80s. That is very coin-like. We're gonna try this one live. Yeah, I think it's literally all soft right here. I think the moles pushed this area up a little bit. Definitely have problems with moles in this yard, especially in the front. But uh, I have no idea what this is gonna be, if it even is a coin. But if it is a coin, it sounds very silver-like. But with that other penny over on this edge, you never know. And is that it? Yeah, that is a, oh, it's not aluminum. That is a solid lump of lead. That's definitely old though, but man, that had me going. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm about to flip my lid. And yes, that's a bottle dump pun. So I came into this section here just to run over it with the detector to see how extensive maybe this bottle dump is. And um, I dug out this aluminum cup on an incredibly high tone and as I thought there's low overload signals all through here There's just a lot of modern cans and stuff, too So I just wanted to check and I do know that this is more extensive of a bottle dump to come dig out But that's not what I want to show you. I am about losing it right now So I figured while well, the brush is really low um, And this when this creek floods this is all underwater here this bottom portion here This is why there was a retaining wall built kind of in this section here to keep it from flooding the house out too much. And um, I have never swung the detector in and around this old aviary. Aviary. <laughs> you can see the original path. It comes right through here. I've swung my tech detector through there before. I never really found anything. And all the clippings are down there because I've been clearing it out and cutting it recently. But I figured... There could be some undisturbed soil on both sides of this walkway going to the old aviary. And I just literally swung around for 30 seconds and had a high tone. Oh my goodness. Look what I have down in the hole. It appears to be a silver quarter. It really wasn't super deep for this area. What is it? Oh, it's a Washington. That is definitely silver. What is the date? 1942? Yeah, 1942. That makes me so happy. And that is the first quarter from this property. I haven't even found a modern quarter here. So if I just randomly found this right here, I sure hope there's more around this walkway, but you figure there had to have been a lot of activity back here with the barn there, the aviary here, and the path leading the whole way up to the house. I can kind of just picture this back in its heyday. There it is. 25 cents from 1942. I'm gonna keep digging around here. Hopefully there's more.
Alrighty, so I took a break and took my silver quarter up to the house so I don't lose it. And um, after I found that, man, there was like no coin signals in through this area. I just happened to start in the right spot. But uh, over the last 15 minutes, I dug a deep uh, mason jar lid closer to the water. As I said, I expected the targets to get deeper and this was like eight inches down. I dug an old tube of some sort there, yellow tube. That's fairly old and I threw other one thing there, but I'll look for it later. Brought out the heavy artillery, because um, since there's no roots in this section, or at least not many, and it's very soft soil, I want to see what some of the big targets are down here, like are all over the rest of the property. I actually bumped a setting here on this. Okay, where was it? Did I put my shovel in it? Let's move this here. You can see how big this is. A foot and a half off the ground. So I'm gonna dig some of these overload signals, see if they're anything interesting. Hopefully some cool big old relics down here. Well, I can't say it's the best find I ever made, but you gotta at least acknowledge, but that's a pretty awesome looking plug. A gigantic one. And what did I get? I got a big old pie tin. Probably from the 1960s or something. Always find that old aluminum stuff around the old houses. So one pie tin down, and who knows what else to go. I am now at the base of these walnut trees. It's been about 15 to 20 minutes, just digging a lot of scrap, and um, just digging a lot of the big signals here and the weird ones. I just wanna see if there's anything interesting. There's the one outbuilding that came down there. I had a signal in the 70s range here. I thought this might be a mason jar or something. I don't know what this is. Oh man, you can't see it from that angle with the sun. But it looks like a piece of plastic and I think the signal is either in it or down under it. Um, please, I hope this is not somebody's long gone pet. We're gonna dig it out just a little bit to see what it is here, down under there. I don't know if it's just roots I'm hitting or if I can actually feel something in that bag. We're gonna find out here very quickly. Naturally, if you buried a pet, it would be deeper than this, so. Um, what have we got going here? Oh my goodness. Okay, thankfully that's just like a barrier layer there. I don't think we found good old Floyd or whatever the animal's name is down here Betsy where is the signal though It's a giant piece of aluminum under that plastic. Unreal. All kinds of debris in through here. Naturally with that coming down. Relics can hide, but they can't run. So let's commence Operation Relic Discovery. So I've literally been out here almost all day. The sun is just going over the hill on the other side of the road for me, which means it's about 20 after four o'clock. We lose the sun here a little bit earlier uh, on this property. But this is what I wanna show you that I was just blown out with the blower here. The old ruins up under here. The steps came down from the side of the house right here where the spring is. So they probably would have had their goods that they needed kept cool down in there, the milk, the butter. And uh, man, 
I should probably dig some of this out and see if there's any relics down in here. You can tell it's been grown in for a very long time. When I bought the property, I had no idea that any of this was down here. You can see it's just all layer of dirt on top of here. I bet there's some relics and coins hiding under here somewhere. We'll have to dig this out another day. I've been out here for about five hours or so filming this epically long video. Alrighty, so I hope you all enjoyed the video. It has been quite a while since I went out and did a mega long metal detecting video and I had a blast out there filming that today. So I figured I would end the video here with something quite interesting. Um, in the garage I found a drawer full of locks and keys and there's a reason why I'm showing these specifically on the end of the video because this really turned into like a coin shooting hunt more so of trying to find as many coins as I could on the property. So when I opened the drawer originally I brought them back to my house but when I found them uh, I was looking in there and just looking at all the interesting uh, different keys and sorts which if somebody's interested maybe I'll make another video on them. There's a lot of interesting ones. Uh, most of them are not super old though there's a few oddities in here. You know, you got a really nice skeleton key right there, and this is probably one of the more interesting ones I saw. Um, but anyhow, down in the bottom of the drawer was a coin. And that coin, let's see who can identify it from the reverse. It's kind of rusted, probably from being up against these locks for many years, and maybe some in the bottom of the drawer. But, uh, it was a metal drawer, and uh, check it out. It is a 1986 uh, Mexican peso. Not in the greatest shape, but I'll see if I can clean some of that rust up. But that was a super cool find um, to get out of the garage slash uh, workshop area there. So I figured I'd, that'd be a fitting end to my mega long coin shooting video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.